Just like sharpening your edge tools requires an investment in some equipment, sharpening hand saws requires a few specialized tools. However, while you can spend hundreds and even thousands of dollars on grinders, whetstones, jigs, and honing guides for sharpening your plane irons and chisels, the tools required for sharpening hand saws are relatively inexpensive. Let's start with a way to hold your saws while you're filing. This is a saw filing vise, and you can spend a good deal of money on one of these, or you can spend no money at all. It really comes down to your budget, your desires, and how often you're going to find yourself sharpening hand saws. If you're going to do a lot of saw filing, a commercially made saw filing vise might be a good option for you. This one happens to be a newly manufactured model made by Gramercy Toolworks, and it runs about $200. The saw is placed into the jaws with the teeth protruding slightly above and a simple twist of the handle locks it firmly in place. The Gramercy vise is by far the best saw filing vise that I've ever used and it is probably the best and most readily available commercially made saw vise. However, it may be a bit above your budget if you only intend to file a couple of saws per year. Less expensive cast iron versions are available on the old tools market. These can generally be had for around $20 to $50, depending on the make and model. However, being old antique vintage tools, the quality can be hit or miss. So it's important to actually inspect it and see it in person before you buy. Make sure that the jaws close tightly and evenly and grip the saw firmly. And if you don't want to go the commercial vise route, you can make your own saw filing vise out of wood. There are lots of plans on the internet that range from very simple to very complex. One of the simplest is just taking two scraps of wood and clamping them into the bench vise of your workbench. Just sandwich the saw blade between the two pieces of wood, placing the wood just below the gullets of the teeth, and then clamp the whole assembly in your workbench. And if the jaws of your bench vise aren't quite deep enough to hold the depth of your saw, you can just clamp the whole thing right to the front of your workbench with a couple of bar clamps. And you're likely going to get a little bit more vibration using a wooden saw vise or the scrap wood jaws. However, if you get the saw low enough in the jaws so that you're clamping just below the gullets of the teeth, you should be just fine. In addition to the saw filing vise, you're going to need some files. The first file you're going to need is a flat mill file. And we use this to joint or level the teeth before we file or sharpen. And we also use it to side joint the teeth to even out the set later. Now just about any size mill file will work. Just make sure it's a single cut mill file that's made for filing metal and not a double cut flat file that's designed for filing wood. And you're also going to need some tapered saw files. Saw files come in various sizes appropriate to different sizes of saw teeth. Most saw file manufacturers will have a recommendation for which size saw file to use for which size teeth because you don't want to use the wrong size file. These files are not true triangles. You can see that they have small flat on their corner. And the larger the file, the larger the flat. If the file or the flat is too large, the flat will not allow the file to get into the gullets of the teeth properly, and it's going to do more harm than good. So my preference is to go with a file that is the proper size or one to two sizes smaller than what's called for by the manufacturer. I don't like to go with a file larger than what's recommended. Now, I'm going to recommend that when you buy your files, you buy more than one of each size that you need. These files do get dull. They really only last for a few saws. So you don't want to end up having a file go dull on you in the middle of sharpening. And while you're getting your files, do yourself a favor and get some properly sized file handles as well. Another handy accessory to have is a file angle guide. Now you can buy these commercially made 
uh, but you can also make them yourself out of wood. The purpose of these guides is to help you hold the faces of the file at a known consistent angle when you're filing the saw. This is going to ensure that all of your teeth come out at the same angles. Now, while these guides aren't required to sharpen a saw, they do help to give you more consistent, repeatable results. Even after sharpening saws professionally for many years, I still use these guides when I sharpen my saws today. The next tool that you'll need is a saw set. Now, this is a simple tool that's used to add a consistent bend or set to the teeth of the saw. Now, there are a lot of different styles of saw sets available, but I'm going to recommend that you get a plier type saw set for your first set. These are going to be the most readily available. They're the easiest to use and going to give you the most consistent results. Now, mine happens to be a no-name copy of a Stanley 42W, but there are a lot of models that work just fine. Just make sure that the one that you get is appropriate for the size saw teeth that you're going to set because many of these tools come sized for different size saw teeth. Usually there's a large size and a small size. Uh, the large size would be used for teeth of you know long hand saws. The small size would be used for your joinery saws. Mine happens to be able to do saws from four points per inch to 15 points per inch, so I'm pretty well set with just this one. Another useful item to have is a permanent magic marker. You can use these to mark the tops of the teeth after you joint them to make it easier to judge your progress as you go along. Or if you have to take a break or step away from the saw to take a phone call or whatever, you can mark the tooth that you uh, left off at. Uh, especially when you're doing joinery saws, uh, it can be very difficult to remember or see the teeth, the tooth where you left off. So it's good to have a way to mark that tooth to go back and pick up where you left off. And just as important as all the tools is having good light. Don't try to file saws in a dark corner of your shop. If you can't see well, you're not going to do a really good job filing and you're likely going to strain your eyes. If the light in your shop isn't bright enough for you to see the teeth well, consider getting some supplemental light, maybe a clamp light, a desk light, or some other type of supplemental light that you can use to light up the area that you're working. And if you're going to be filing any saws with very small teeth, like joinery saws or dovetail saws, some extra magnification isn't a bad idea. It could be a visor like the Donegal optic visor or something as simple as some magnifying readers from the dollar store. Now, my eyes are still pretty good. Uh, I need glasses for distance, but I don't need them yet for reading and I can usually sharpen saws pretty well without any additional magnification. But when it gets down to the really small teeth, like the dovetail saws, a little extra magnification can really be very helpful. Finally, you're gonna need some scrap wood. A saw is not finished being sharpened until it's been tested and shown to cut straight. Many times after sharpening, minor adjustments will be required. So make sure that you test cut your saws before you put them back in the till.